Father, we do love you. We thank you so much that you have given us life and life in abundance. And we're appreciative. We thank you from the very depths of our being, Lord. We love you. We offer ourselves afresh and anew this morning, Father. Sitting at the foot of your cross. We thank you, Lord God. We have ears to hear. We desire to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. That we can take it to heart, put it into action, and live the victory life you provided for us. And Father, we just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're beginning today. We're actually continuing from last week. We talked about the laws of the Spirit. Uh, we don't have time to review all that. So if you'd like to review that, you just ask for a CD or DVD or go online and watch it. But uh, we're going to pick it up from where we left off last week. Isaiah 55, and beginning with verse 9, says... For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay, so what the Lord is saying here is that you thought you knew it all till you got saved. Hallelujah. And some people still think they know it all once they get saved, but uh, the, the, there's so much to learn, and the issue here is that God's ways are so different from the world's ways. It's pretty much opposite, to be honest with you. Um, pretty much opposite. The world says, get me all I can get, and God says, give all you can give. I mean, it's just contrast. is stark contrast in, in every situation. Uh, the world says, take care of me, take care of me. And God says, love others as yourself. Hallelujah. So, you, you, God's ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So, we need to get with God's ways, right? That's what we're talking about with the laws of the Spirit. We, we have to understand, learn, know them, understand them, and operate in them. Because if we don't, then they uh, can work against us. Hallelujah. So, beginning in Isaiah 55, verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. You hear that? God says his word will not return void. It shall, it, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God is a God of prosperity, isn't he? God's a God of abundance. Hallelujah. So we see here that God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. He says it's like the rain that comes down. And uh, it waters the earth, causes it to bring forth, to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. His word is likened to this. His word will not return void, but it waters. It, it does what he pleases, and it prospers in it, causes to, to bear fruit. Let's look in Mark chapter 4. We're talking about the laws of the Spirit, and in today... In, Specifically, we're talking about, or going to talk about, the law of seed time and harvest, or the law of sowing and reaping. Mark chapter 4. I know it's in my Bible somewhere. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. And so he's telling you here what the kingdom of God is like. As if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep, and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. So here we're seeing that God is 
talking about the kingdom as being like seed sown. And we don't really uh, understand how that seed does what it does, but we know that it does it every time if they're under the right conditions. And we know that God is the one who's called it, caused it to be that way or set it into motion. That's why we're studying these laws of the Spirit, so that we can see how God has set things in motion on earth, and we can get with His motion, His cycle, His ways, which are higher than our ways, in order that we can walk in all the victory He's provided for us. So, the kingdom of God is like this. It's like a man that casts seed into the ground. Seed into the ground. That man goes and sleeps several days and nights. It indicates here. And then the seed springs, springs up and grows. The man doesn't understand how, just the way it's put into motion by God. And first comes forth, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn of the ear. So it's in a process. First this, then more, and then the full fruit. Right? Yeah. And then after that the harvest. Each has a process of its own we don't have time to get into today, but the, the, the picture here is that God is likening the kingdom, you living in the kingdom, to this. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's just set up that way. It's God's laws. We can abide by them. We can understand them. We can learn them. Or, in a sense, we'll be trampled by them. Okay, now I'm not saying that to be negative. I'm just saying that if, if you... We used the example last week, if you're speeding 55 in a 35 zone, you get pulled over, plead ignorance, you still get a ticket. You have to pay for it. Right? So that's what I'm saying. Ignorance is no excuse here. Uh, God has given us his word so we can understand these laws, these principles. And it's up to us to dig them out, to understand them, and to practice them. Hallelujah. It's mentioned in Matthew 21. Look at Matthew 21. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 21, beginning of verse 42. And Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Now what God is saying here, it's not a negative thing. As long as you're in the kingdom, hallelujah. <laughs> but what he's saying here is if you fall on this stone, the stone being Jesus, and Jesus being the word, right? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, that of the only begotten Son. So, Jesus and the Word are synonymous. They can't be separated. So, whosoever will follow this stone shall be broken. That just means that uh, you'll submit your ways to His. In other words, no longer you in charge. You know, I, one of my favorite songs used to be, I think it was Frank Sinatra that sang it, I Did It My Way. Yeah. What a stupid song. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to like that one. I thought, yeah, I like that song. Until I got saved. And I said, hey, it's not my way anymore. It's got to be God's way. Right? And so that's what he's saying here. Anybody that falls on this stone then it'll be broken. It doesn't mean that you'll be helpless, crippled, or, you know, hurt in that kind of a sense. It means that you will recognize God is in charge. And you will do it His way and not your way. And then the latter part of that verse says, But on whomsoever it falls, it will grind him to powder. Well, we don't want to go into detail on that. But in other words, if you don't do it, you're, 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 you're like... Being snared, you're falling into a trap. Um, because the laws don't change 
for you. Right? Even if you misunderstand them, even if you thought you were taught the right way, you weren't taught the right way, and even if you uh, thought it would work better this way, and you try to tell God, but it's really better this way, you know, then it uh, doesn't matter any of those excuses. God's laws are set. And you can either learn them and get with the program and be victorious, or you'll, you'll have problems in your life. And then you'll be wondering, how come God is not doing what I'm asking him to do? Hallelujah. Okay, you all with me? This is a victory message, all right? I'm just saying God's ways are not optional, okay? Look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I think we read this last week, but we'll read it again. It's a good one. Psalm 119. And verse 7. Actually, I think it's Psalm 19. I put 100 too many in there. It's 19. <laughs> Psalm 19. You know what? I'm in a hurry writing these scriptures down. Sometimes I transpose them or mess them up. Just forgive me. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Hallelujah. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Hallelujah. It converts the soul. Do you see that? God's word converts the soul. It makes you think like he thinks. We said in Isaiah 55 that uh, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Well, I need his thoughts in order to be victorious, right? My thoughts got me in trouble. My thoughts cause me problems. So I've got to conform my thoughts to his thoughts. Well, it's a conversion process because it's not within natural man to do it. How do we do it? The law of the Lord. Okay, the laws of God are what we're talking about, right? The principles of God, the way it works, an understanding of how God has set things up changes our way of thinking causes us to smarten up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We left off and we talked about Romans 7 and 8. Let's go there. That, that was all an intro to get us to this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Romans chapter 7. Now remember I told you last week this is this has been grossly misunderstood by many well-meaning people, many Bible teachers. But in the seventh chapter of Romans, Paul is speaking about life as an unsaved man. When you read that, you need to understand that. And then the eighth chapter talks about his deliverance or his salvation. Okay? If you don't understand that, you'll misunderstand it because there's a lot of teaching going around saying that we have a, a dual nature and that uh, they use this as an excuse for sin, that they can't help it. They're, they want to do right in their mind, but they don't do right. And so they use all that to say that they have to live wrong, but that's contrary to the rest of the scriptures. Jesus Christ delivered us. He defeated sin. He defeated it for me and you, and we don't no longer have to sin. We choose to sin sometimes, but we don't have to. Hallelujah. Okay? All right, Romans chapter 7, beginning of verse 21 today. I find then a law. That's what we're talking about, God's laws, right? I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Okay? For I delight, verse 22, in the law of God after the inward man. That law of God spoken of there, verse 22, is Moses' commandments, his law. Verse 23, but I see another law in my members. That would be the law of sin. Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. Why? Because sin is stronger than your soulish realm, than your mind. Okay? Now that's for the lost person. Hello? It's not for you. That, that's why if you don't understand these things, you'll get confused. Okay, so here 
And if you're lost, then you might want to do right, but you still don't do right. And some people just give into it and don't want to do right and just do wrong all the time. I mean, it happens a lot. So, let's go again. Verse 23, I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Okay? And then he says, verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? What that refers to there in, in that day and era, one of the punishments was that they would take it, a dead carcass and strap it to the back of the person and he would have to wear that, dragging it around with him until it eventually killed him because of the disease and the stench and the, the problem with it. And so that's what Paul's referring to there. And so he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? And so you can kind of picture that. Well, verse 25, he answers it. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Now, Dake says that that verse there, so then, with the mind I serve myself the law, really is saying in conclusion, to conclude. So what he's saying here, I'm concluding this about my lost state this way. That here's the way I was. Verse 25. With my mind, I served the law of God, Moses' law, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And always the law of sin wins out in that situation until Jesus came, right? right. Jesus is the only one can set us free from that. So verse 8, I mean chapter 8, goes on to tell you that you can't pay attention to the chapters in this case. You just have to understand it was a letter he was writing. He didn't break it up like that. Chapter 8 says... There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And verse 2 spells it out. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made, that's past tense, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. There's the saved man. Okay? That's for you. The law of the spirit of life. Now, we're studying these laws so we can operate in them, so we can understand them. So that we don't have to use this lame excuse that's propagated out there that, well, I have to sin a little every day. You know, I mean, I'm just human, you know. Hallelujah. I mean, you hear that in the church a lot. Well, if you have that attitude, you won't resist it. You'll just succumb to it. And so uh, here we see the truth, and that is the law of the spirit of life supersedes the law of sin and death. Yes. Hallelujah. And the law of the spirit of life is the Lord Jesus Christ, his word, his resurrection, and it's freed us from that which we used to be in bondage to, that body of death strapped to our back. It's cut it off, circumcised us, cut it off, gone. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he's explaining it here. He, verse 3 says, From what the law couldn't do, in that it was weak through the flesh. You, do you see what he's explaining chapter 7? God sending Jesus, his own son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in a fleshly body. He was victorious. He won. Hallelujah. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in you, me and you, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's good news, isn't it? God's laws are higher than these earthly laws. You want victory? You've got to understand the laws of God. You don't need to just understand them. You've got to operate in them. You've got to go with the flow of God's laws instead of the flow of the world's ways. And misunderstandings of these can cause you to end up in the world's ways thinking you're in God's ways and disastrous results come about. <coughs> Hallelujah. But Jesus said you'll know the truth and the truth will what? Free. Make you free, right? Yes, Hallelujah. God is good. All right. Go with me. Let's look at the law of seed, time, and harvest. 
or sowing and reaping. Pat Robertson had a big teaching out for a long time, the law of reciprocity. It's all basically the same. Genesis chapter 8. Willie mentioned it this morning. About to preach my message, Willie. <laughs> Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. We're looking at the law of seed time and harvest. And God said, Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remains. Uh, look at the ground there and be sure the earth is still here. <laughs> I want you to understand, even though it's Old Testament scripture, it's still valid today. Okay? I mean, you are, your feet are on earth, right? Some of you think you're in heaven, but uh, no, just kidding. Hallelujah. We are on earth. We touch the earth. And so this scripture is applicable to us today. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat. Summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Do you see that? While the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. And God's given you a law of the Spirit here. Seed, time, harvest. Isn't that what we read in Mark the fourth chapter? That he sows the seed. He goes in and sleeps. He gets up, does other things, goes back to sleep, gets up, does other things. We don't know how long. And then the earth brings forth the fruit. But it doesn't just pop up the fruit. It pops up first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Right? Seed, time, harvest. You know, in this Burger King era we live in, we don't like the time part. We want seed and harvest. Right? I mean, it, if my internet doesn't work fast enough, I've got to go get more to make it work faster. I can't sit here and wait on it. Right? i got to get more bandwidth from Bright House or get more memory in here where it'll operate faster. Seed, time, harvest. Okay? Until earth is no longer. As long as the earth remains, that's the way it's going to be. Are you with me? All right, look in Genesis chapter 1. Let's go a little deeper on this. We're talking about the law of sowing and reaping, the law of seed time and harvest. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, And God said... Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Say, after his kind. After his kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Now look, there's two keys to this. Number one, the seed produces like seed. After its kind. Okay? Number one, we're talking about the law of sowing and reaping seed time and harvest. You need to understand these principles. They're biblical principles so you can operate in them to the fullest extent. Okay, so here we see the seed produces, it brings forth after its kind. And the seed is in itself. Hallelujah. So if I plant a seed for an apple tree, then that seed produces a tree that brings forth multiple apples. And inside one of those apples is multiple more trees for many, many more apples. Is that correct? Yes. Hallelujah. All right, this is the way God has set it up. If you want to argue, you have to argue with him because this is his law. All right? Verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed, what? After his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was what? In itself, after his kind. And God saw that it is good. How does this relate to us? Why, why, are, we, why are we looking at this? Because if the seed brings forth after its kind, and the seed is in itself, then what you sow 
you're going to read. And multiple times over. It reproduces after its kind. Hallelujah. All right? So, Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. Let's go there real quick, like. Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. God is not mocked. This is his law. It's set in stone. You get with that stone, you'll be blessed. If the stone rolls over you, you got a problem. Galatians 6, verse 7, be not deceived. God is saying, do not listen to other theories, doctrines, instruction. Don't be deceived. Okay? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Good or bad? Good or bad? Okay? We want to look at it as a good, but it's good or bad. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. There it is. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life everlasting. It is a sure law set in stone. Hallelujah. It's applicable in every area of our life. The key area that I wanted to talk about today, and I only have a couple of minutes, is words. Okay, words. Words are both seed, or can be both seed and fruit. Well, the seed is in itself, so that's applicable here. Okay? So, words being seed, or words also being fruit. You have to understand that because it plays a very important part in your life. Look in... And actually, don't look there because we don't have time. Luke 8 and 11, Jesus tells us the seed is the word in that parable. The seed is the word. And in Hebrews 13, 15, you just jot it down and read it later. Hebrews 13, 15 talks about the fruit of our lips, okay, which would be our words. So we see here, biblically, the, your words are both seed and their fruit, Okay. Proverbs 18.20 says, our belly is satisfied by the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah. The fruit comes from the seed. So, the seed is implanted in your heart. It's broken open, digested. Revelation knowledge comes forth and by meditation and then becomes action and then becomes fruit again. Now, what you say. All right? So, when I'm saying this, you'll understand, because some of you are going around saying, that killed me. I had a man, he was a sales manager, dealership I worked at, and he was always saying everybody and everything's brain dead, but especially his wife. He loved his wife very much, but it was just a joke with him. Man, she's brain dead. Do you know how she died? In a motorcycle accident where she became brain dead and died that way. Hello? Words are powerful. Words are strong. And if you choose... To ignore the laws of God in these areas that we're teaching, that you want, you're to understand from the Bible, whether we teach it or not. If you choose to ignore them, then that stone falls on you. Not because God is doing it, but because the law has been set up. The law of electricity is a great law. If I use it right, but if I go stick my fingers in the side. Or not, even not knowing. You understand what I'm saying? God's laws are set up. They're here. They're not changing. We get to understand them and abide by them. We'll live victorious. 
We can use them to their full potential, like electricity. Use it to its full potential. But if we don't understand them and ignorantly we trip them up, we go against them, then we wonder, why God? I tell you, the, the, I'm, i got to close, but the law of sowing and reaping, seed time and harvest, is the root uh, law of operation, I would say, of God. Uh, love is the key law, we know that, but, but this law is like the operation, how it operates law. on them, I'll bring good on them too. Yeah. Well, God is incapable of evil, James tells us. How do you reckon with this scripture? Well, it was just Old Testament. He was mean back then. <laughs> no. The way you reckon with this is understanding these laws and principles. And that is, if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap evil. And yes, God did set it up that way. So if you want to blame him for it, it's up to you. But the cycle is in motion. You can either get with the program or get run over. And God. We'll talk more on the next week. Actually, not next week, because loving hands will be here. We'll talk more on the week thereafter. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for showing us your laws, your principles, the way this earth works, the way the setup is, Lord, so that we can abide in those laws, Lord, and reap the benefits of them and the victories and the life and abundance that you provided for us. We give you the praise for it, Lord. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear.